Welcome back, everyone, to the Flow Track Podcast. Flow Track Podcast at gmail.com is the email address. Right in. If you want to participate in the Guess My PR segment, Internet Coach, Pick of the Week nominees, or any other questions or comments, subscribe to the Flow Track YouTube page. You can listen to wherever you get your audio podcasts. I am Kevin. He is Gordon. We're going to recap Ostrava. We're going to do Guess My PR. We're going to talk about YouTube comments. Um, and touch on a couple other stories. Gordon, we'll start first though. Update on your voice. How's it feeling? Um, it's better. I don't know though. Is it's it deeper? It it's it's deeper. Know. It's deeper. So that could be better. It's mm-hmm. not deeper. No, it's still gone. Still not there. I'm not good. I'm not good at taking care of myself. I've learned. Um, when I get hurt or sick or whatever. You always have to add like fifty percent recovery time because I'm not really good at doing mm-hmm. the right moves. I just wait and then wait for it to be better. I just think time is the best healer, not really medicine or ex- whatever you're supposed to do. You know, so I, I mean that's wrong. Water, though. You, you can do both water. things. Drinking all this that's water. That's good. That you're- this is good. Congratulations on drinking water. You can do both things, though. It's not an either-or proposition. You can do time and you can do medicine or yeah, cough drops and time. You can add those two things, and there's a multiplying effect. Uh, I wanted to start uh, with with this tweet I saw about the finish in the women's hundred pre classic, where someone's questioning if the photo finish got it right because it reminded me of your Marcel Jacobs Christian Coleman World Indoors analysis where you looked at the photo finish and enhanced it and thought that you were going to be able to see the difference between one one hundredth of a second. So I think your thought process is spreading throughout the globe, Gordon. In this case, people are thinking Shrika Jackson finished ahead of Shakira Richardson. So you're, you're partly, I think, responsible for the – actually, I'm sure people before you did the over-analysis of photo finishes, but you certainly have had I mean, a part in its history. Let's hear out Mr. D.P.O.S. Smith. What's, what's his – Position. So it says, yep. athletes shall be placed in order in which any part of their bodies, i.e. torso, as distinguished from the head, neck, arms, legs, hands, or feet, reaches the vertical plane of the near edge of the finish line as defined above. So he's basically quoting the track rule, and then underneath is the photo finish, and then he says, what am I missing? And All right, let's zoom. we're throwing up the picture there. Yeah, you see the, the zoom angle. And from that angle, it does look like Jackson is in front. But the problem is Richardson is being obstructed because the photo is being shot from that side. And what he's missing is there's a photo from the other side, which also comes into play. And TJ Vizel, track and field sprint expert, says, official timer uses two photos on each side of the finish line. We are missing the opposite picture to see the torso of second place. Are we just destined to have this every single time there's a close finish, Gordon? Is this our future? I think so, but when I do look at that photo, Uh-oh. it does look Conspiracy like Sharika Jackson won. It does look like Sharika Jackson beat Shakira Richardson in that photo. So, But there's another photo. That's the whole point. There's another photo. There's another angle that you're not seeing. Yeah, but this angle... Looks pretty convincing, doesn't it? Because you, because you literally can't see. It's literally blocking the other runner in question. That's why it looks convincing. A hundred. I mean, I weren't know. they? They both. It was ten nine two for both of them, right? Yeah, I think I'm. So, so it went to the hundred. So again, like I said, after your Coleman Jacobs analysis, it's very hard to separate that. Smaller distance. Now you look at the photo, you see Elaine Thompson her all way out there. That's easy to figure out. That's clear as day. But when you're talking about one one hundredth, the margin is not going to be that big. So to pull it apart from this is going to be difficult. This just reminds me of like we are in the to- we're in the screenshot era of sports, right? Every foul now in the NBA is a dirty play because someone gets a screenshot and it makes the defender's actions look incredibly nefarious, which like you just slow it down. 
It's like, well, hold on. They were just playing basketball and limbs were flying around and an arm hit this part. It, it, you're adding way too much context. Uh, or you need to add more context that it's there. Photo finishes. I mean, I guess you could say it's the original screenshot. This predates even us arguing about it on, on Twitter. So it's not surprising to me that we have come to this point. But yeah, both timed at 1092. I'm, I'm confident that they got it right. You are confident? I mean... Yes. I, I believed in, in Jacobs over Coleman. I believe Richardson over Jackson. Okay, but let me ask you this question. Do you think timers get it right 100% of the time? Well, sometimes they do need to make judgment calls, right? That's the whole idea when it gets, when it gets that close. Yeah. So, you didn't, no. You didn't yeah. answer the question, right? You no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Timer. Yeah, th th there's obviously going to be human error okay. at, at some point. There's going to be human error. But I'm saying picking one photo from one – I would need to see the other photo, right? But you never – that other photo usually never gets released. You always see it from this angle, not that angle. I mean, watching in real time, didn't you think she got second? I thought she got – I thought they got it right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know why don't that's, they that's hard to see. Why, why, why don't they release the second photo? Here it is, 10.913 to 10.914. That's what it was. So, 0. 0.001 second. Spreads is going to be close. I don't know, man. I think maybe they made a mistake. It could have happened. I'm not willing to count out human error. I just think it's interesting that we just assume automatic timing, a computer is doing the job for us. But, you know, at the end of the day, it requires two eyes to make a decision based on what the computer told them. So mm -hmm. there could be, there could have been a mistake at the world champs. There could have been a mistake here at Pre. I do think there mm -hmm. was a mistake at the 2016 Penn Relays, Drew Hunter. DMR, but no one's talking about that. Go Gordon, watch the, the tape. Here. Drew Hunter did not play win the, the race. Now. It was Jack Salisbury. Um, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we have to take – I mean, it's, they're the refs, right? And you may think the foot was on the line or the foot wasn't yeah. on the line. There was a foul or not a foul. At the end of the day, we have to have some sort of consistency, and that consistency is – uh timer who is certified who we just mm -hmm. be trust is that the word be trust and trust you say trust and trust and yeah just trust simply trust yeah that we trust all you gotta do to get to get it right um so shakari won this round maybe they'll go the other way it, in two months well with jacobs and coleman it mattered because a gold medal was at stake this ultimately does not really matter those two are pretty even yeah. And whether or not one of them ran 10.913 and one of them ran 10.914 or they flipped it, we're in the same situation that we're in. Yeah. The season will not be defined by the pre-classic 100, who got second and third. I feel confident in that. I feel more confident. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. It could be the thing. It could be the domino. All right. We had Ostrava yesterday, which took place right after we got done recording. You had Femke Bowl, 300-meter hurdle, world record. Some people call it a world best. I'm calling it a world record until someone presents evidence that someone else ran it faster. You had Reese Prescott go 993 in the outside lane in a minus 1.2. Uh, Allison Felix, we got runner-up in the 200. And then we had a, a very competitive 800. Let's start first, though, with Bowl. 36.86 was, was smashed the record by over a second. I mean, just absolutely crushed this thing. Looked really smooth um i think it was the second to last hurdle she had some issues with but other than that just so fast between the barriers we have a situation developing here gordon we had we had a big two in both those events men's and women's formula hurdles talk about warholm benjamin men's side and then the women's side i'm talking about muhammad mclaughlin but then we had an excellent third when it came to the olympics an all-time third who just got the short end of the stick because they happened to be competing at the same time as the two fastest in history. 
But so far in 2022, the most impressive low hurdlers on the women's side, it has been Femke Bowl because of this performance. And on the men's side, it's been Alison Dos Santos. So the bronze medalists, these, these young up-and-comers, um, are really putting pressure on the top two. Yeah, and I think it's just a result of all the buildup from those two big twos throughout all the Olympic season. Obviously, they were just, we want to know who's going to win, the, the Lilla versus Sydney, Rye versus Carson. And then it just gave us the ultimate high at the Olympic final. And there's, it's hard to go keep going up from that. So we were due mm-hmm. for a downturn. And I think during that downturn, the two third place people, like you mentioned, they were like, wait a minute, I wasn't part of that high. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm still ascending. And now we're seeing that. And I think, I think Femke Bull and Allison DeSantos, I think both of them will finish in the top two at Worlds. That's my take. Well, and they're, yeah, so Bull is 22. Um, she's just a bit younger than McLaughlin. <clears throat> Dos Santos is younger than Benjamin and Warholm. And they got to see it all. They got to soak it all in. To your point, not only were they not victims of any of the pressure, but they got to kind of watch and understand the new level this event is at. And they got to see that at a very young age when they could still improve. And I think it probably helped. It probably helped recalibrate to them what the expectation is. Like Dos Santos, if he comes up a couple of years ago, he's winning Diamond Leagues in 48, right? And now it's like 47 mid, 47 mid, 47 low is just like the, the, the bare minimum. That's like the, the standard that you have to hit every time. Not to mention going 46 and then eventually if he wants to break a world record one day into the 45s. You could do a similar thing with the times in the women's formula hurdles. It's just gotten so fast recently. They had to do this to keep up and even stay a few meters back of these two all-time greats in each event. <clears throat> but they weren't at the end of their careers. They're at the beginning of their careers, which is what makes them so dangerous. Sorry, I was muting myself. <coughs> ah, got the cough. Um, yeah. And what do you, when do you think we'll see, like, Bull and Dos Santos challenge, like, the top two? Are we not going to see it until which, Worlds? Yeah, probably. Like, all three in one race. I don't think yeah. we'll see it until Worlds. I think we might see one of them versus another one. Pre- I mean, it's very clear. Dos Santos, at least, is not shying away from anybody. He's run the yeah. first two diamond leagues. That's all you could ask. If you're showing up to every diamond league and people aren't running against you, well, that's it's not on you. You're doing everything you can. Yeah. I I don't think your pick is crazy though that they're both going to finish in the top two. I wouldn't go so far as to say, oh yeah, for sure one of them's going to get gold. But I think they're that good, and I think their greatness has been obstructed by the fact that there's two people even greater in there. Yeah. But stuff changes year to stuff changes year to year, and again, they have such a they have you know McLaughlin is super young, so she's obviously got the capability to go up a level. Benjamin and Warholm are still pretty young; they have capability to go up a level. But you'd think you know someone like Dos Santos and Bull are really good candidates to keep improving. I mean, she ran fifty two oh three last year. That's in that's insanely fast. I mean, I, I wasn't too long ago when. The world record was slower than that. And we were talking about, hey, are we ever going to see a sub-52 in the women's hurdles? And then she went and ran 52.03. So it's exciting. I mean, I wish, why did we not run a 400 hurdles in this meet? Like, why are we running 300 hurdles? Is this a high school meet? I think so. I, mean, we, I think it's right. a high school meet. Yeah. Here's my, here's my stand. They did this on May 31st. Uh, J- starting June, no more of this. After June, you have okay. to be running a regulation event. That's that's the rule. So no six hundreds, no one k, no six hundreds, no two k's. The, oh, the only exception is a three thousand. You can run a three thousand still, but everything else okay. needs to be regulation. 
What about two miles? No, don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. 10, 5, 3, mile, 15, 8, 1, 2, all that stuff. I don't, I don't want to see the three hurdles anymore. A 200-meter hurdle? No, I don't. No. Zero percent interest in that. I want to see a all right, what 110 about, or a 100. What about a 60-meter no, 60 meter dash, but it's with Coleman and Jacobs? No. I want to see a 100-meter watch- dash with Coleman and Jacobs. Okay. No. Okay. I, I don't Fair. think it's too much Fair. to ask for people to run – an event that's contested in the world championships. That's there's a there's enough events to choose from. We don't need to add more events. Anyway, let's talk about Reese Prescott. Let's go to the hundred. This was a surprise to me because you look at how Prescott's been running over the past couple meets. You didn't see a nine ninety three coming, and you could tell what the meet organizers thought because he was in the way outside lane. Here he did not get a preferred lane, but goes nine ninety three into a minus. 1.2. That's a huge run for him. The field wasn't crazy good. He caught Blake, Johan Blake at the end, but that's a lifetime best for Prescott. Someone who's been a big talent for a while. I feel like there's a lot of British sprinters who are just like, they'll, they'll have one or two good races a year and then something will happen at the major championships. But you always could say, oh man, this person's a bronze medal favorite. Or this one could get in the mix, right? Zarnell Hughes, like, Man, maybe gold in Tokyo? Maybe? Like, like if he doesn't fall start, like there was a possibility. It was trending that direction. And Prescott was one of those guys. And he ran 994 back in, in 2018. He's been in the 99s for a while when 99s have put you in the mix in these races, but just hasn't happened at the right time. So add another name on there. You talked yesterday on the pod. The 100 meter dash is not a showdown, it's a party. You can add another person there. I don't mean I don't think you're picking him for a gold or even a medal at this point, but now you have another person, 993, which is, you know, right in the mix, right? Right what Hurley has run this year, right what uh, Trayvon Bromel has run this year. <coughs> it's, uh, it's crowded there. Yeah. I look more to the party, like you said. I enjoy it. More to the party. I got a question for you, though. All right, hit me. Uh, U.S. men versus the world in the 100 at World Championships. Team scoring similar to NCAA's 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Who scores the most points? U.S. versus the world, men's 100. Yep. Who scores more points? All right, there are 39 points to get, so they need to get to 20 points to, to win, right? I think all four men will qualify for the final. I think I think an American's going to win. Mm-hmm. I think America will probably go like one, three, five, six. So what is that? Ten one, plus three, six. One, three, five, 16. 21. More than 20. <laughs> yeah, so 20, See, 25 points. Okay, so you're taking the U.S. and U.S. versus the 25 world. 25 points, yes, for the U.S. Yeah. So they have to get, if I'm doing the math correctly, if they got, if they get third, is their top person? Because then you go six plus five plus four plus three, you only get to 18. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. So you have to have someone go one or two. If you have someone go one, it's really hard not to get it because once you start with 10, it's difficult not, you know, because you figure someone's going to finish in the, in the four or five range at least too. So you're going, you're taking the U.S. to get over 20 points. The yeah. key is getting four people to the final because it always feels like you're going to get four to the final or three to the final, but it's, it's, it's much tougher than it appears. I mean, do you remember in 2019? They scored 18 points. It was just one, two, though. Yeah. And you, I mean, in 20, how many guys made the final in 2021? In the Olympics? Yeah. Just two. And in the Olympics, it was, yeah, Curly and two. Baker. Yeah. Yeah. So they were eight and five. So they got 12. 
Key is numbers. You got to get numbers into the final. Yeah. Because if, if, if you do, the chance of one of them obviously just increases the – in a wide open field like we're going to see, it increases the odds that you can get the winner, but also just overwhelming. Here, here's the real challenge. You ready for this one? Sure. Who will, who will score more points in the one and the two combined? The U.S. men or the Jamaican women? see so i mean i'm feeling really good about the u.s men in the 200 yeah because if degrasse gets it going he's obviously a threat but then who else in the 200 on the world side of things as wide open as is in the in the 100 it's not that in the 200 because you don't have jacobs in the 200 you don't have i mean jamaica hasn't put out a, a 200 meter threat maybe seville will run it so I'm feeling really good about the U.S. and the two. Is this the – yeah, this is – throw this list up for those of you watching. This is the yearly list in the 200. Knighton, one. Curley, two. Norman, three. Lyles, four. Coleman, five. Bowling, six. Or, sorry, bowling is – bowling, Coleman, and Fanbelay are all tied for fifth at 1992. So Fanbelay is the first non-U.S. athlete there. So, listen, I mean, Norman's probably not going to run it, but between Knighton, Curley, Lyles will be there because he has the buy, and whoever that fourth person is, they're going to be in business. So um, I'm feeling really good about that one. Jamaican side of things, though, I think it just depends who runs it. If Thompson or Raw, I know she's been a bit noncommittal about it, like she would need to double. But their 100 group is still so strong. I think I'll go U.S. men, though, because I feel really good about I feel better about – um, I feel really good about the U.S. men's 200, one through four, just yeah. because there's nobody else, just, be, just because the competition is just not there. Whereas I, I think the closest comparison would be the Jamaican women 100, where it's like, all right, you feel good about the top two, obviously, but then somebody can bump out their three and four because they're going to get four women in yeah. as well, too. Well, and we'll then I get, out. so then it would, that then it would come down to Jamaican 200 versus U.S. 100. And we already went through the U.S. 100 options. They're going to get four. Jamaica, let's see, does Jamaica get four? Do they have the Diamond League champion? Is Dean Asher Smith the reigning champion? Can we look up who, had, who won the Diamond League title last year in the 200? Real quick. I don't know. Because, you know, you had Thomas. Mboma's hurt now, though, so that's, that's an opening. But Asher Smith looks like she's running pretty well. So, but then again, you know, Sharika Jackson at the Olympics didn't, didn't even make out of the first round. I think she's going to run better this time around. That's a very interesting prop bet. Mboma's a Diamond League champion. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Jamaica's only going to get three. In the women's two, they're going to get four in the hundred. The U.S. men are going to get four in the hundred and four in the 200. It's going to be interesting. Yep. So we'll see. All right. Why don't you talk us through this, uh, this 800 here? Yeah. So the 800 this year has been a little – Hit and miss, more misses than hits. But the race that we had right after our podcast yesterday was pretty wild. It started off, um, well, this is the ending finish. But look at this kick out in lane, what, four or five? It was crazy. But first, let's, let's take a little look back at how it started. If you go to the beginning of the race, can we do that? Uh, whoever's producing the... Uh, YouTube channel, the YouTube video. Go to the beginning of the race. Way beginning. This is the beginning of the second lap. Go all the way to the beginning of the of the race. Keep going. Way beginning. All right. Yeah, right there. Right there. So watch this. So there are like 20 people in this race, which is not normal for an 800. And Max Bergen, who was kind of the favorite, gets in a little scuffle here. Look at that push off. And 
you think, all right, we're going to get something a little chaotic because typically you don't put 20 people on the track in an 800. It's kind of like a high school race. Uh, Bergen tries to hold on. He basically runs the entire second lap by himself. He looked like he was falling apart, but when Nigel Amos tried to make the pass, Bergen was able to hold him off, which was impressive. But at the end of the day, it was the two kickers who were back in like fifth and sixth place who stole the show. Notably, the 17-year-old who had a wild kick. So, like, look at this. So, he is in one, two, three, four, five. He's in seventh place with, like, 80 meters to go. Look for the man in yellow shorts. He had a mismatched top. He had, like, a 2018 top with a 2021 bottom. It was mm – -hmm. he was not dressed to impress, but he was running fast. And just watch yellow shorts. So, we'll push play. Look at him. Yellow shorts. Still back. And then he just like, boom, out of a canyon. And almost takes the win. Doesn't get the victory, but does kind of turn some heads. It's like, hey, who is this guy? Look him up. His name is Slaman Mula. He mm -hmm. was born in 1999. Very young. What do you think about this kid? Slaman well, he's Mula. not as young as Wayne Yoni. The guy who won yeah. is 17. So Mula's not yeah, that young. I'm not yeah, sure who the 17 year old was. So he's what? what um, he's 146 before this year. Mula. Wanyoni we knew about because he won World Juniors. But you're right. Yeah. Mula is more of an unknown runner. He's, he's he had Algeria. run one, Algeria, yeah. Um, 146. He had run a lot of 400s before this year. Um, so maybe that accounts for the improvement. But it's just. This race is so hard to figure out this year. I mean, is a 17-year-old, 18-year-old going to win it? Is that what we're destined to see? No, a guy I think who this hasn't... guy. I think this Algerian is going to win it. I really? think he's going to win okay. gold. The, the way that kick, man, on that pace, he's going to learn. I think he's going to win. I know that sounds crazy, but Slaman Mula from Algeria is going to be your 2022 world champion, according to me. I think right now, it's so early. And the time You've been saying been it's so early impressive. every day for your entire life. What's going on? It's not early anymore. I know. It's June. Well, I'm, It literally I'm, is June. We're not... 800 has been so not spectacular that we're just jumping at the first shiny object that we see. So I'm not going to give this guy Fair enough. the gold based on a kick in a race that he didn't even win. I'm not going to give it to Wanyoni either, although he's, he's number one, I think, now for sure. Because this is his first race outside of Kenya, literally. So I think experience does matter for something. Do you know who's still in not that bad of a position right now? Who? Donovan Brazier. Because we That's still true. haven't seen... That fast of a time. No idea what sort of form Brazier's in, but I mean, what about Zahafi, the collegian who ran 140? The world lead is coming from the Florida relays, Gordon. When's the last time that's happened? In the 800? I don't know. Is that, Never? is that, am I wrong? That's Florida relays weekend, right? When he ran that? Yeah. Yeah. And part of me wants him to hold it all the way through. So Florida relays will have the, crown of fastest 800 of 2021 i just i think we're so early days still in the 800 and there's gonna be like 10 other plot twists because 800 is always crazy even when we think we know what's going on and now we're just like learning people's names and being like yep that's the that's the gold medalist <laughs> yeah that right there <laughs> i mean i'm putting all my chips on mula all right it's yeah it's I'm mula, gonna have a, right mula yeah. your, your your money your money yeah there you go. yeah that's where i'm going on. i'm gonna have a I'm going to have a race breakdown on this one uh, later on today as well, too. Although you took a lot of my points, so I'm going to have to figure out a way how to make them even better. Just do it again. Yeah, like, this is what Gordon said, but uh, I'm going to right up back. it. Yeah. Uh, Felix ran. She was second to Saini uh, in, the, in the 200. What did she run? 22 high in this race. Um, you know, after she ran that fast 200 in, 
in South Carolina. I was like, whoa, she's like, she's like ahead. I mean, I don't know what she wants to get out of this year, but she's still, she's still fast. And this was still a, a solid mark. I mean, she's beating everybody in this field, but one don't know in general. I mean, I know the sprint times from this meet weren't crazy fast. Um, but I just, I still don't know when her last race is supposed to be. Well, 2278, 2278. Yeah, this was definitely uh, an appearance race. It seemed like she kind of bagged it in the final 50. And there's just a big unknown surrounding Dallas and Felix because when she did run that 200 against Melissa Jefferson, I was like, whoa, if she's this as the baseline, she could find a way to make the 200 meter team. I mean, she almost made a 200 meter team last year, right? She, what place was she? She was fifth, fifth or sixth last year in the 200. Um, I mean, she wasn't going to make it because she wasn't running 21 seconds. But um, if the 200 isn't as strong this year as it was last year, and she was fifth, she was fifth last year, mm -hmm. I could see a world where she could find a way to get third. But I don't know. She's just a big mystery right now. What do you think? I don't think we really know because no one said like what her plans were. I remember when she said after Mount Sac she's going to run a you know a few races. I wouldn't have thought Ostrava would have been on that list. If you're just going to run a few races, I wouldn't have thought that run in South Carolina would have been. Although her husband's from there, so. That probably had something to do with it. South Carolina, not Ostrava. Um, so I don't – I feel like if she's going to run USA, she would have said she's going to run USA's. Like she's running these races as if she's going to compete for U.S. championships. Like when I see her in those meets. Because if you're just doing a victory tour, right, if you're just going around places, I feel like she would have just hit the U.S. circuit. You know, maybe not Prefontaine because of obviously the relationship with Nike, but she, I feel like she would have stayed more stateside and you know done the pen relays, done meets like that, where she could have been warmly received by the crowd and just had one last run on some of these places where she's had defining moments in her career. Maybe that's what she's doing, but internationally, to me, this looks more like she's actually going to run. USA's and she's trying to run her, you know, trying to get some, some reps because I mean, you look at the, the 2240 plus 1.8, this is 227 in a little bit of headwind, not, not too different between those two. I mean, she ran a quarter, right? In like 52. No, she hasn't. This year. I thought she ran one 400. No, I don't think so. Not right. I think she's only won two, two hundreds. No, she ran at the, in, at the track meet or whatever that the Southern California one. She ran 52. Oh, she did. Oh, okay. At the begin, yeah, at the beginning of May. So, because I was gonna say, well, what is she? How is she doing in the two hundred? Or sorry, how's she doing in the four hundred? Yeah, she lost to um, Alice ran fifty one one in that race, and then she ran fifty two two. So, okay. I mean, uh, like, she never announced, "Hey, I'm gonna run at USA's. That's gonna be my probably my last race." So, I'm, I'm assuming that she's not gonna do it. But I'm saying, like, the races that she's running. It doesn't feel like a retirement tour to me, I guess is what, what I'm saying. Like when I envisioned yeah. in my head, oh, this is what Allison Felix's retirement tour is. I, I guess I don't really, I didn't really think about it that much. I don't know what I, what I assume, but it wasn't this. It would have been her competing more in just the U.S. based meets in, in front of you know, big crowds, waving goodbye, and then that being it. So I, I have, I'm, with each passing race, I'm, I'm more confused. And maybe she does go to USA's. Maybe she does go to USA's and that's the that's her last race and she announces it. But none of the information has come out in like a clear fashion throughout any of this. So maybe they're still undecided. Not sure. Um, I right, one more story I wanted to get to before we go to guess my PR. Um, let's do this one pretty quick. You you flagged this one for me because you're a uh, you're a uh, devout follower of the NCAAs and regionals. Uh, there was some drama in the 10,000 at the prelims, the West prelims, 
right, um, where there was a fall, runners were asked to be, there was petitions, protests, asked to be reinstated, uh, which prompted a uh, decision by the NCAA not to reinstate the athletes that were involved in the fall, um, which raised the ire, to say the least, of Iowa State athletic director, um, father of Iowa State runner, Tommy Pollard. Um, we can pull up some of those tweets here from Jamie Pollard. Um, the tweet's long. Basically, he's not happy. He's not happy about how they, in, the, in an 800, they reinstated athletes in the 10,000. They didn't. And then he said that the NCAA committee representatives that were signed to the meet didn't watch the 10K race and that the NCAA staff member assigned to track and field did not attend the meet, according to Pollard, either. Um, and then he went on to say, it's absolute insult to the student athletes and coaches involved that the NCAA is inconsistent in how it applies the rules. Unfortunately, these three student athletes, so talking about uh, Arkansas athlete, Air Force, and Iowa State, will never get the chance again. Just really sad that the NCAA refuses to do right by student athletes. It is clearly time for radical change. Ironically, the NCAA will have no one to blame but themselves if the NCAA is ultimately eliminated. Your thoughts, First of all, I think it's funny when they make sure they use the word student athlete all the time. I think it's funny. Like, yeah, they're runners, they're athletes, student athlete. You're just trying to politic anyway. But just to give people a little more backstory, there was about three laps to go in a 10K. There were top 12 qualify. There was 15 people in the lead pack that had broken away from the other 30 ish athletes, right? So we knew that they were gonna, the 12 were gonna come from this 15. And uh -huh. Yeah. The the fall basically eliminated three, and then that there was twelve left, and then those twelve all qualified, meaning the fall allowed for. Basically, it was the the race was over after that fall, and there's similar falls where in the eight hundred, there were two rounds of the eight hundred at the prelims. There's only one round of the ten k at the prelims. The fall in the eight hundred, it was in the first round of the prelims, so they got in advance to the second race of that weekend. There was no second race of the weekend in the 10K. And so I guess NCAA officials assumed, oh, we're willing to advance people who fall if it's still within the same weekend. We're not going to advance people who fall if it's going on to the, the next weekend, which is the NCAA championships. Yeah. Right. Now, that's kind of a, a bullshit theory because – these, these aren't the regional championships. Like, this is 100% the first, it's round the first round of the NCAAs. Like, this is yeah. the same meet as the NCAAs. Like, they seed it according to that. That's not, there's no winners at this race. Like, there's not, like, a, a champion yep. crown. So, um, technically, you should be able to advance based off of circumstances from prelim weekend to NCAA weekend. Now... Here's the thing. Whenever you're not falls a big, happen, you're not a big advanced guys uh, off of I'm falls. We just talked guy. about this last pod. Yeah, yeah. Whenever falls happen, it's just you got the short end of the stick. Like it's part of the sport of unluck that happens. You just got to deal with it. Not everyone gets the best chance of qualifying because of weird situations. In this situation, those three athletes, they got the, the, bad end, the brunt end of the stick, whatever the phrase is, whatever the word or quote, sure, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying, can't complain about it because it's just bad luck. And you can't, bad luck happens in our lives, bad luck happens in track and field, and bad luck happens at the NCAA prelims. So, I mean, look at James West. The guy freaking just like leaned over the line a little too much at the NCAA prelims, yeah. and then he was disqualified. He was like a 335, 1500 meter runner, and he got disqualified. So, shit happens. That's the real situation. The NCAA committee should just have uh, responded with just two words shit happens. 
and then that's enough. <laughs> that solves the problem. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my take. I do, I do like the last sentence here. Ironically, the NCAA will have no one to blame but themselves if the NCAA is ultimately eliminated. I think the real I, irony I, is is no one from the NCAA will even read that statement. Well, I think it would be great in the future, 30 years from now, you're talking to your kids, maybe even your grandkids. Grandpa Gordon, what caused the downfall of the NCAA? Was it this NIL stuff? What's it, was it fights over TV revenue? You're like, no, no. Mm. Little Gordon the third. It all started with this 10K fall. That's where it all went south. Maybe. 30 for 30 maybe. on this one race. That would be hilarious. Yeah. I don't know. You got like the Arkansas, Iowa State, Air Force group coming together. and Maybe. 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 Stranger things have happened. I just don't see this being the impetus for change. I, I get what he's saying in terms of like they're all – you know, the NCAA being unresponsive and not even having people at the meet. I mean, it sort of underscores just like you got all these people in, in, in position of uh, authority and power who aren't wielding it in, in a way that's in the best interest of like at least coming to like a logical conclusion. Like if either advance them or don't, but at least like have people there, right? Like respect the meet enough, respect the sport enough to have these people in play. But I do not think that this would be the thing that would bring about. Also, one change. last thing. If Abdi yeah. Hamid Nur was in that fall, do you think Abdi Hamid Nur would have been able to get back into that front group? Well, I'm looking at both of those falls, and I get, this is all context dependent, right? Because it depends when the fall happens. You know, is it a Mo Farah fall that happens way early on in a 10K when it's tactical and you get back in? Or is it women's 800 at the 2016 Olympic trials where it's 150 to go and everybody's flat out? Well, those two falls are different. But in that 800 fall, it looked like everybody was able to recover. 10K, yeah, it wasn't like – I mean, in the 800 fall, she stays on her feet, right? I mean, she loses space and stuff, but she stays on her feet. If that happens in a final, no one's even thinking about that. I mean, remember the Jewett Amos fall in the Olympics that we thought would cause someone to – I mean, we thought Jewett would get to go through and he didn't? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think – I mean, not – I'm watching this again now. I mean, three guys went down. That sucks. But yeah, it seems like that there was, if 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 you had a superstar athlete, they could have got back in, and it obviously impacted a lot of athletes. They're not just the, I mean, there's people hurdling, there's people ducking out of the way. Tough break. All right, let's move on. Now. All right, what about this? What if that front group of fifteen it was the first place guy who falls, and all fifteen athletes fall? Yeah. There's just yeah. big carnage. They're all on the ground. What do they do? Well, you wouldn't advance anybody. Using your rule, number 15 now becomes number one. You're, I think they just need to have actual rules around this, and they need to enforce the rules consistently. I mean, the problem with track and field rules is things are so arbitrary, and, it's, and no one understands them. So then people get mad all the time because the rules are not applied the same in every scenario, right? Like, just like we saw with the rerun in that high school state. Meet. Like, that needs to be spelled out whether or not that happens. Is that a thing that we're going to do? Or is it not a thing we're going to do? I think it was good that we have some more clarity around the lane infringement, stepping inside the curb rules there about how the distance races, you know, one step is good, but then you get a card, and if it happens again, then you're out. You could say, all right, that's dumb, but there needs to be a rule. That's how sports functions. Same thing with the scenario you propose. There should be, we shouldn't be guessing, oh, what should they do in this, in this scenario? Like if they want to do reruns, that's fine. But then just put that in the, in the, in the rule book, you know, and you might even need to get super specific. It might need to be crazy. You know, if the leader falls in a 10,000 meter race inside two laps because of someone else tripping him, then we do this. Like it might need to be that level of specificity versus if they fall with five laps out or more, then there's not like, I don't know. I just, as a track and field fan, I find it frustrating when stuff like this happens. And then someone who's not a fan asks, Oh, Hey, what's the rule on that? And like, I don't know. It's like yeah. the Farrah DQ or non DQ, right. Versus those world indoor DQs. It's just like, it's so incredibly arbitrary. Um, what we decide. And then, 
sometimes it causes people to be advanced to the next round. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, but you can't re- – we don't rerun finals. Yeah, I look at it this way. I mean, just like getting pushed in a race and falling and not advancing is like in the NBA when your star player gets hurt and they don't advance in the playoffs because they don't have their best player. They're not going to wait for the injured player to get fully healthy to have a full 100% versus 100% team. It's just part of the sport. Injuries happen, falls happen, and we just got to keep moving. You can't let injuries pause an event, and you can't let falls pause an event. All right, let's go down to uh, Guess My PR because we're going to be way over on this pod. I'm going to do a better job on Guess My PR of actually saying the PRs at the end. I got some feedback. It said we just kind of go, whoa, and then I never actually say at the time for the folks who are listening. So I want to make oh. sure that the folks who are listening and not watching understand what the PRs are. Colt, uh, what's our first person? What do they want? What do they want here? All right, this is Jeremiah. Four by four split, first leg. I'm supposed to guess his – okay, Colt, we're supposed to guess his, his relay split? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So right. Jeremiah wants the, the first leg of his four by four predicted. 100 meter PR, first clue, 10.66, 10.66, 100. All right. Okay. What else do we got? All right. 200 meter PR, 21.41, 21.41. So 10.66, 21.41. Okay. Do we have an, any other it. clues? Here's a photo of him. All right. There he, I'm not going to say his I'm not going to say his school. Well, I mean, those of you watching can see his school cuz then you could just google it. I guess it's hard to get this the 4 by 4 split. All right. Uh I guess this is the race in question. I mean 10.66, 21.4. I think we got some info here. Where are you leaning, Gordon? Um, I'm leaning towards. I don't know. Where are you leaning? So, do we have any more clues? I'm going to say that before. <laughs> that's the. That's all. That's all we got. That's the. End. Where are you? All right, leaning? ten six. Um, I'm leaning forty between you know forty six, forty seven, okay. range. I like asking you first because then it it confirms what I was thinking. I was thinking 47, 48. All right. I'm probably going to go. I'll go 47, 5. 47, 47. 47.5. Now it's the first leg, which means the split is probably taken incorrectly. 47, 9. I don't know if that's going to help him or that's going to hurt him. You go 47, 9. I'll go 47. Oh, for Jeremiah. I'll go 47. Oh, for Jeremiah. All right, what is Colt it? puts it up there. Hold on, hold on. I want to get people in the chat. Oh, in the chat. we already got oh. it. Ah. 46.04. I got baited by Gordon. Yeah, baited. <laughs> we 46.04. Well, I said 47 flat, didn't I? Yeah, that's way off, though. There's a way difference between 47 flat and 46 flat. That's a big difference. Okay. I'm within a, less than a second. I'm going to take it. So 46.04 for Jeremiah. I win this round, Gordon. Sorry, you got last. Uh, next one. All right. That was a good one, though. For Michael. He was just given PRs. All right, Michael. We're guessing his 5K PB on dirt. <laughs> That's correct. All right, so dirt, I got my dirt calculator. Should I get on my dirt calculator? Is, is this oh, like tennis? Is his clay court, his grass court, and his hard court? All, All right. right, I got my dirt calculator. First workout, four by mile, one minute rest, six, 12 average. So the first workout, four by mile, one minute rest, six, 12 average. All right. I'm going to try a new strategy this time where I'm going to guess it throughout. Right. I'm going to guess it throughout. So if we're guessing a 5K. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I mean, what? So six minute pace for 5K is like 1836, 1838. Um, I would think he'd be a little bit, I mean, if he's averaging six twelves for this workout with the minute rest. So right now I'm thinking 19. 
I'll just say ni- 1910. I'm thinking 1840 right now. All right, let's keep going. Next clue. 400 meter PR. 66. 66 in the 400. All right, I'm, a, I'm keeping my guess. At 19. Yeah, you don't got speed. You can slow twitch you, you muscle need, only. This is yeah, a, slow this twitch is a dirt only. track 5K. You don't need a 400 PB dirt track. Oh, a photo here. Very important. He's holding, he's holding, he's holding a corn. He's holding corn. corn. Yes. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Why is he running with a corn husk in his hand? For those of you listening and not watching, this picture is amazing. Uh, he's flat out pumping his arms, and he's holding a corn husk like a baton. Uh, hold on, producer Colt. You can. You're from Kansas. Yes. You should be able to help us with this. What's going on? Uh, you want me to just like recognize that it's corn? I, I'm not sure what well, you're looking a, for. You're. You have the most knowledge of corn, based on uh, where you grew up. Can confirm that happens. That is corn. Uh, I don't know if this happens. I think this guy is leaning into the the culture, and I I appreciate it though. Maybe he's Gordon Amish. once. Gordon once ran a four x four with a box of kettle corn, but not actual corn. Oh. It's a little different. Um. All right. Next clue. Do we have one more clue? That's it. That's so all this got. makes me think he doesn't have a track to train on. Wait, because he's carrying corn. Oh, yeah. the dirt part. The dirt. No, I think he doesn't have like an official track, which probably means his training is not really like organized. So I'm going to use that as a factor with my prediction. Do you think? Do you think he eats a lot of corn? Is that why he's running with the corn? I need a full no. story on the corn, regardless of whether he, or not we get this. Wait, what is, look, let's go back. Let's see his shoes. What type of shoes does he have on? Go back to that photo. They're also made of running corn. shoes. Yeah, those are running shoes. He's wearing a jersey. Okay. What do you mean? I think they're socking. I mean, they look like they could be wrong. They look like train. They look like trainers. It's not like he's yeah. running spikes. I'm okay. gonna go. I'm gonna go. 1925. Final guess for me. Put your question. I'm going 1836. So Gordon's at 1836. I'm at 1925. David says 1856 from the chat. Let's see. Final answer for me. 1836. All right. Cool. Are you ready to reveal? Oh, you were right. 1903. I shouldn't have moved up. 1903. I had it at 1910, and I moved up to 1925. 1903. All right. 22 seconds. I got to hear the story about the corn, though. Can we get a follow-up email on this one? Right in, please. I think we can. And I want to hear the dirt. I want to hear about the dirt. I want to hear about the dirt story here, too. I just... This one I mean, is it's a pretty simple for... story. They, it's probably like a cross country time. Well, then why didn't he say that? Why didn't he say cross country? No one ever, in my whatever years in running, I've never heard this is my dirt PB. Never once has that sentence been uttered. Cross country, you can say that. Should, no one ever says. Should dirt. I ask like all the the top pros? Hey, we know your what's track your PB in the five k. We know your cross country PB. What what's your dirt PB? Oh, and then like, oh yeah. Maybe, like, maybe I'm old and out of touch, and the kids are saying dirt these days. I don't know. That's what I want to know. I want to know what's the deal with dirt, and I want to know the corn story. Maybe his team does a relay where they hold corn. Yeah, it looked like a, a relay. It looks like they're doing a relay on in the field with the corn yeah. husk. Yeah, that's awesome. Terrific, terrific stuff. All right, we'll close out now with uh, YouTube comments. Some of the best comments of the week we got eight of them to get through gordon uh this one responding to a poll question we put up it says is shakari richardson a lock for a world championship medal 80 percent said no 20 percent said yes and tim responded if four by four if four by one counts then yes we haven't really been thinking much about the four by one lately yeah, and I guess that would bring up a – that's kind of a good question. Which one would you be more confident about? Because the 4 by one obviously introduces the baton element. 
and you figured Jamaica's going to be fine to get gold. I think some of those other teams are going to be pretty solid too out there. I mean, U.S. should medal given their ability at all four legs, but with the baton out there. We haven't been talking about it, I think, because the individual side of things has been so interesting, and that's just yeah. a mystery in and of itself. We'll have plenty of time to talk four by one after the team gets picked. What's all next, right, next one? How pre classic changed the men's 100? Uh, Queenie Plant 187. Why does everyone hate Coleman? Well, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, he didn't win, and his two big hundreds this year, he's gone north of 10 seconds. So I think that's more just reflecting. That's why we all hate him. It's not, there's no, there's no hate. I mean, we're just saying it's wide open. Uh, yeah. cause I, I agree with most of what, most of what you're saying on that clip, which is we thought it was going to be a two person race heading into the indoor season. And then the indoor season confirmed that I thought, and then the outdoor results from both Coleman and Jacobs and Jacobs scratching the hundred have changed. Yeah. Because both no, those he, guys have dropped. Yeah. Just the truth. But, you know, I it think it's, happened. I mean, it's more. Coleman can of, still uh, win for yeah, the record. Can. When you're saying it's wide open, it doesn't mean the person who was the favorite can no longer win. It just means that more people have a legitimate shot at winning. Yeah. Like if we had Vegas odds on this, you would have a ton of people you get action on. Oh, man, I wish we could. All right, keep reading because I Next can't up. read. Yeah, so this is a reaction to a reaction of the, the Iowa State meet where the runner got punched, and then they had the rerun. Jonathan says, DQ the organizers the way they started the 800. They did not start in lanes like they should have. They waterfall started. It's stupid. Of course, you're going to have runners all over each other. Again, this is where it would be benefit from having consistent rules. And I know different states do this differently. Some states do waterfall starts. Some states with the 800 start in lanes. There's no standardized like metric here. I mean, apply the same condition, you know, the same sort of thing to other sports. I just I think everybody wins if there's a little bit more consistency here. I mean, even the distance. I'm more intrigued about. You got 1500, actual, 1600. I'm more intrigued about the actual practicality of DQing an organizer. Mm, like, that is might like be the tough. meet official, cool. like point to like the press box and be like, you're out of here. You're DQ'd. Tee him up. Tee him up. Can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that I want to see. All right. Keep moving. Uh, Bumbo. Responding to the women's 100 right now. I think it'll be a Jamaican sweep. People like to overlook Shrika Jackson. She's been so consistent in the 100. Yeah, I mean, the Jamaican sweep is still possible. But Shrika Jackson, obviously, I mean, it's not breaking news to say she's the most vulnerable of the three. Richardson just barely beat her. Uh, she's lost some other races in the 100. Could she get in the, like, is she the favorite, though, for the bronze? Right now, you know, she might be. I would listen to that argument. She's definitely one of the main contenders for that third medal. Yeah. So if you're telling me Jamaican sweep, sure. Sure, it could happen, but it's hard. It's yeah. hard to get all three running that well on the same day. All right, next one. I mean, you're gonna put they're gonna put three in the top five for sure. The question is, will they put three in the top three? Uh, respond to the video. Biggest takeaways from the pre-classic distance races when we're talking about the Bowerman Mile. Uh, s let's talk about how Hawker was never a factor. Jakob owns him. Well, okay, hold on a second. Let's hold on. Uh, I was with Gordon. I was picking Tira over Hawker, but Hawker ran well. He was making a move that last hundred. Got stuck behind those two guys, but I don't. Yeah, Jakob owns him because Jakob owns everybody except Cheryu. That's how the, the men's mile has worked for the last two years. Yeah. He's it's okay to be right? owned like, by one of the greatest. Yeah, yeah, and 
they haven't raced a ton, but even if they did race more, I think we all know what the result would have been just based on the fact that Inga Britson wins Diamond Leagues. So I think this is the classic case of like creating a uh, creating a rivalry when there wasn't one and then saying to the other person, it's like, man, Steph Curry completely owns Tyrese Maxey. Why is not why aren't more people talking about Steph Curry owning Tyrese Maxey? Like, wait a minute, hold on. They haven't played that much, and one guy's an all-timer, and the other guy plays for the Sixers. All right. Although I was looking back at that 2020 draft, Maxey was way far down there. This is good 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 pick yeah. by the Sixers. I mean, won't mean anything, but good pick by the Sixers. Uh let's keep moving. Uh Rock Haven says oblique seville is the real deal but in a four by one the u.s should still have a big edge at worlds gone are the days when jamaica had four solid men in the hundred sprints this is a, i mean i don't know if travis is just picking the most rational cogent points but these are i mean that's a good comment like rock haven is like 100 percent correct jamaica's edge is not that i mean they don't have an edge anymore just in terms of straight up victories but could they beat the u.s yes because the u.s still needs to get the stick around and if Jamaica can win with one nine eight guy, one nine nine guy, and then two guys low tens. Yeah, isn't that basically the formula that Italy had last year? Yeah. Jacobs, Tortu, and then two other guys, and they ran three of the same guys at World Relays, so they had a, like a lot of good chemistry. Yeah. If I'm Jamaica, I'm like going all in on the four by one. I'm just basically saying, listen, it's going to be tough to win a bunch of uh, medals in the one and the two. But let's just practice handoffs for the next six weeks. Let's just get really good at handoffs. What would you rather have? Would you rather have your country sweep the 100 or win the 4 by one As a fan? A fan of your country. So in this scenario, we sweep the 100, but then just like drop the stick in the 4 by one or something? Yeah, you sweep the 100, and then you get, like, second or third in the 4 by one or you win the 4 by one but then you don't sweep the 100. Do I win anything in the 100? No, you go, like, 2, 4, 6. Uh, probably sweep the 100. Yeah? Sweep the 100 and then just blame the relay on not practicing together. But like what the Americans do. <laughs> well, except they don't sweep the 100. Yeah. Yeah. Second All right. Anything, anything left, Colt? Oh, we got another one. Uh, responding to Gordon's rant about the problem with pro track and field athletes. I think you're talking about scratches here, right? Uh, Lex says, not sure if I agree with all the points made here, but I will add that as a fan, I'm scared to pay the travel cost to watch a meet live to find out at the last minute that my favorite athletes are participating. Very true. I hear you. I hear you. Very true. If If you're – Marketing a meet based on these athletes coming and then those athletes don't show up, that's a problem. That's a problem. This is not a team sport, right, where the Dallas Cowboys are going to play or the New York Rangers are going to play, right, or the U.S. men's national team is going to play regardless. It's an individual sport. So there are fans out there who are choosing to pay their money to see their favorite athletes and you understand it if it was a one-time thing or a rare thing but if it's several athletes and if it's a repeated problem then i could see why fans would get frustrated with that yeah and that's a big reason why people really um gravitate towards national championships and world championships because you know there's less likely to be a scratch there because it actually matters to the athletes yeah they're gonna run they're not there needs to be something really wrong yeah, for them, for them not, not to show up. Things. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, you could say the same thing about pro sports too. But again, the show more, you know, when you're talking about pro team sports, I mean. But then you're talking about just the identity. You know, what you're tied into is is the team success and stuff. Yeah, you want to see your favorite players play. You want to see um, Steph Curry LeBron James. play. Yeah, you want to see LeBron James. You want to see Mike Trout, right? But. Um, with individual sports, I think the absences are just magnified that much more because yes. it, it'd be like, you know, you just 
you know, not Nadal or Federer or whatever, not showing up to a major. Serena Williams not showing up to a major. It just it just changes the dynamic so much. Last one. Here we go. This one comes from King Naldo. Um, says I need FlowTrack to disclose their injury report on why YouTube been missing several shows without notifications. Damn it, you owe it to us. Wow, Gordon, throwing right back in your face. Hey, you I have, have my reasons. Defense? All right. Yeah, your reasons aren't very I, good, though, and you didn't disclose ahead of time. Hey, I no. did the podcast like 24 hours. No, not 24 hours. 48 hours after breaking my clavicle on a Monday morning. Broke it Friday night. One weekend later, I was doing the podcast yeah. with a broken arm. Yeah. So I, I, I care about the podcast. There's just certain times where... Things happen, and it, it just doesn't work out. I have apologized to the community. I've apologized mm. to you and Travis and Colt for missing the Birmingham pod- podcast. Missing the Eugene podcast was pre-planned. That was not by design. That was by design, not by me missing it. So, but yeah. here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing about these podcasts. The month of June is going to be very wild with podcasts. We are going to be going live for the podcast so much during the month of June. We're doing it, obviously, um, we have Friday, and then we're going to go live Sunday after the Diamond League Robot. And then the next week, we're doing five podcasts, maybe even six in seven days. Then the week after that, we're doing five in seven days. Then the week after that, we're doing six in seven days. So... The month of June, there's going to be a lot of podcasts. During what Worlds, we're going to be going live every day. So, so what you're saying is you one. show up for the championship part of the season, but you don't show up yeah. for the other meets? Huh. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that Sounds I, familiar. Okay. Maybe I'm like, I, maybe I'm a hypocritical to these athletes. You know, maybe I also, be- I bail on, on, the big meet, on the big regular season meets. So I apologize. Yeah, I may not be here this Sunday, so it might be you solo while we're disclosing things. But, you know, I, just to even things out. There you even. go. Is Cold nobody doing all these podcasts? Is Cold going to be available for all these? I don't have a real life. I'll be fine. Okay. So. Cold's, just, Cold's just scrolling DoorDash when we're doing these things anyway. He's just like, what's next? Where's my next meal? Where's it coming from? All right. That's it. Flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. We need more submissions for internet coach. So... If you want coaching advice, we do that on Friday's show. I can't say it with a straight face still. Uh, you know, what are you training for? Just It doesn't need to be a long email. Just send us something, yeah. podcast at gmail.com. Do you want – you could say, hey, I want Gordon's advice. You say, hey, I want Kevin's advice. I want Maybe you want Colt's advice. Maybe you want fresh eyes. Maybe, I mean, he hasn't run since middle school cross country, but maybe you want Colt's advice. Maybe you want all of our advice. Uh, email the show, podcast at uh, gmail.com for the internet coach segment. Also, you know, send in more guess my PRs. Thanks to the folks who wrote, wrote in this week. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Thanks, Colt. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, everybody watching live on the YouTube stream or if you're watching archived on audio or on the site. We appreciate all of you. As Gordon said, a lot of pods upcoming. Gordon will try to make time on his schedule for. We appreciate him for doing that. Uh, We'll talk to you guys. Wait, what's today? Wednesday? We'll talk to you Friday. Yep.